Chris Tunnel. Many a dream has died Like a tree planted by the water We never will run dry So living water flowing through God we thirst for more of you Fill our hearts and flood our souls With one desire just to know you and to make you know me, lift your name on high, shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more.
morning, church. Some very tired people sitting out there. It was a wonderful week. Welcome to um, our early service this morning. Um, and please remember to either sign in on the Red Book or use the QR code so we know that you're here today. Um, also, we need to uh, have some people sign up to put flowers in the church. So if you can do that, um, you sign in and the donation is $65. It covers the florist's charge and an arrangement is delivered prior to the Sunday of your choosing. Specialty flowers can be requested for an additional charge. Dedicate flowers for our sanctuary during Sunday worship to remember or honor someone on a special date such as a birthday or anniversary. So email Dana Davis or call the church, 828-264-6090, extension 246. So there are several book or Bible studies starting very soon. The After Party Book Study, which is a discussion of politics and faith, that it's a joint study by the Reverend Kathy Beach, of Rumpel Presbyterian and our own Pastor Ed. It will be held the first three weeks on October 2nd, 9th, and 16th at Rumpel Presbyterian, and the second three weeks will be here at Boone UMC each time from 6.30 to 8 p.m. You can sign up by e emailing Kathy Beach at kbeach at rumpelchurch.org. Remember to sign up for Disciple 1, which starts on September 25th at 10 a.m., or Disciple 5, which starts on September 25th at 5.30 p.m. Also, Women in the Word will start their study on the Promised One, Jesus in Genesis, on October 3rd at 10 a.m. You can sign up for these by emailing patty at booneumc.org. We also have a new study beginning on October 3rd at 6 p excuse me, 6 p.m. Emily Collins will be leading an evening study of the Promised One, Jesus in Genesis. It's especially for young mothers and young adults, high schoolers, or those ladies who work during the day and need to come for an evening study. You can sign up for this study as well as the others by emailing Patty. So there's one very special announcement, and I don't see them this morning, but um, Shashir and Gita Shakia uh, received their American citizenship this week. So, so if you see them, they're bringing in a baby, so that may be slowing them down in the mornings. But if you see them, be sure and congratulate them. So stand and greet your neighbor and pass the peace.
Thank you, thank you, Praise Band. And everybody, let's congratulate Shashir and Gita. Yes. We're so happy for you and so glad you're Americans. <laughs> okay, so pray with me, please. Oh, wait a minute, it died. There we go. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the day you have given us. We ask that you be with us as we hear thy word, sing your glory, and worship with you. Amen. And those children going to Children's Church may go now unless they choose to stay with us. Um, oh, yes, you can be seated. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think it said be seated. I, I'm following a, a, a little script here. So, okay. So, um, we have prayers today for Sarita Beach. She's recovering from cataract surgery, and then she will have her second cataract surgery this coming week. Also, uh, Dennis Busher is having surgery this week at Baptist Hospital. Are there any other prayers to add to this? Yes. Your, your friend fell in her? Okay. Wendy. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life, for the gift of your Son, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lead us through the trials, the suffering and sorrow, the challenges and struggles, the tired times and dark places. Be with Sarita as she recovers from surgery and her upcoming surgery, and for Dennis as he has surgery this week. Also be with Wendy, who fell and hurt her knee. Give them all peace and comfort as they heal. Be with those in our heart who we lift up to you now. Lord, fill us with hope. Transform us into your image. Transform us to grow and understand. Transform us that we can be the hands and feet of Christ. We ask all these things in the name of him who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Our mission moment this morning is the bazaar. It happened this week, and we have a video to show you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So what does serving at the bazaar mean to you? It's a way of meeting with people from the community that I never get to see otherwise meeting with people from our church that I never get to see outside of the service that I um, go to each Sunday. I like the, the way that we help the community. I like getting my, to have an excuse to make some really yummy baked goods that I wouldn't eat the rest of the year. <laughs> I just love doing. What does it mean to serve at the bazaar? Well, it, it means a lot of hard work and uh, a, a lot of sore muscles and uh, uh, patience being tried. Uh, but you, you can bet at, when it's all said and done, it, it, it feels good. It means fellowship. Uh, it means uh, getting to see old friends that uh, you don't see all the time because I don't live up here. Uh, so and just seeing the joy on faces of people that come in and can afford something yeah. and something that they love. Awesome. Thank you. And what does serving at the bazaar mean to you? Love. I love everybody here and everybody is so awesome. And I get hugs. I, it just makes me feel better. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, meeting with friends, new friends, uh, learning names that I learned last year, <laughs> but having a lot of fun and uh, serving the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir? What does it mean for you to serve at the bazaar? From my perspective, it is first of all to make sure all the employees or the workers that are here and the people that are visiting us here to church have a safe environment to be able to come either sell or uh, buy things that they need and also just to uh, be able to uh, to be a, a a little light for somebody that may be uh, in a tough situation that we can help them in some form or fashion thank you It's a chance to get out and be a part of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a chance to have fun uh, with a bunch of people who love to serve and have fun doing it. It's a chance to be a part of raising funds for missions and for the church. And um, because I'm retired, I have time, and that makes it special. Awesome. Thank you. Serving at the bazaar is my glory, and it means that I get to see people year after year after year, and it's a blessing, and I enjoy everything I work with, special jewelry. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. What does serving at the bazaar mean to you? It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a great way to recycle and keep all the stuff out of the uh, landfill and while also serving the community and, and providing goods and services for people at a, a really good cost. And we meet so many people. I've made so many friends that are from a different generation than me, from different um, services than me, and I just love it. And I've been doing it for about 18 years. <laughs> so it's great. I love it every year. It's fun. Awesome. Is Rosie, Rosie, do you have anything to add? All right. Well, I'll just, I'll just sit down. <laughs> she needs a mic. Can I, hold up, Rosie. Rosie, hold on, hold on. You, every, everybody needs to hear you. Oh, yes, they sure do. Is it on? Yes, yeah. you're, you're up to you. Okay. They're used to hearing my mouth, I think. Okay, I noticed folks were a little slow dragging in this morning. I know the feeling. I didn't even see it get dark last night. <laughs> I was so exhausted. Praise band, your song was perfect. All this week you have been faithful. So, so good. Sunday afternoon was marvelous. It only sprinkled. Then the rest of the week it rained, but that didn't matter. We had a ball. We got to meet so many new friends, folks we'd seen before. To be able to talk to people that come to work, that do not come to this church, that do not even live in Boone, that do not even live in North Carolina, that come year after year. Okay, great big thanks to everyone who had anything to do the, with the bazaar. I hope you've been blessed like I have been blessed for a long time. There's something special about it. That's what keeps us all coming back. Okay, would all of you, if you're able, that worked or had any part to play in the bazaar, stand up. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Thank you. The amount of red shirts that are here on Friday is just astronomical to see all of the people that are working here. Sam, that video you did of the people walking in the door took two and a half minutes. And I mean, it was two and three at a time walking through the door. It was just unbelievable. And believe it or not, they know exactly where they're going because they've been year after year. You don't have to hand them a map. So we certainly showed 
and honored our mission statement of loving our community and inviting all to discover life in Christ. And we certainly are changed by grace, living, loving, and serving with Jesus this week. So how many of you, was this your very first time with the bazaar? Would you stand up? <laughs> Lots of, it's, mainly did you make a friend? Did you meet someone new that you've never known before? Did someone give you a hug and lift you up when you really, really needed it to keep going? I certainly had several because <laughs> they could tell when I was going down. Okay, um, let me see. Sometimes, you know, we have really, really special friends. Friends that you would take the shirt off your back and give to them. You've met some here, haven't you? Well, we certainly, I have a very special friend, someone who asked me if I had an extra, and only a few of you or a whole lot of you will know what I'm talking about. Do you have an extra knee brace? <laughs> Just so happened that morning, I was already here when I got that request. And I happened to have two on that day. So I went and I took off my knee brace and gave it to my best friend. <laughs> and she doesn't know it. <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> so the things we do for our friends <laughs> that many of you had on knee braces, right? <laughs> that was the funny thing to see us all walking around. Okay. Uh, Colette Kronz, most of you know it know her, she worked this week in children's clothing. And she said, you, I said, what do you think, Colette? She said, I had no idea. She said, until you have been here and worked, you do not have any comprehension of what the bazaar is about. And she said, to see the people so happy and to just know the purpose behind this bazaar, to think of all of the people that are gonna come on Friday and just get what they need. She said that was a totally different experience for her. And then yesterday, we had an unusual circumstance, but you know, it ended up being a blessing. Toward the end of the sale, I went around and just handed out, here's a free bag. I was an Oprah, I think. Here's a free bag, here's a free bag. And as I, it was ending, a member of Mount Vernon came to me and she said, thank you so much for this. You don't know what this church means to the community and the fact that you are giving this to the people in the community. I have a friend and I'm taking this to them. So a situation became a blessing to so many. So thank you all for that. Okay, you wanna know how much we did? Yeah. You sure? Are you ready to really shout? $51,000, and there's still more to come for pieces in silent auction that haven't been picked up yet, but then we do have to deduct our expenses, but that's not that much. So all of this, 90% of the proceeds from the bazaar will go to missions within our church or out in the community, I'm sorry. So with, this also al allows us to do improvements for the church that better able us to serve the community, such as Thursday night dinner, and then the uh, after school program that meets in the church. We're able to do that as a result of the bazaar and because you care. So that has worked out wonderful. There's just so many ways that the church is blessed. You're blessed and the community is blessed. Well, go, boys and girls, men and women, those who are able and not, Doris, Rush, and myself, this is our last year. Lisa Parker, who did Bible school, has said she would like to take over, and she is 52. So look out. <laughs> She's, she has big plans. 
So it has been a blessing for me to be a part of the bazaar, and I hope I can continue to be. You're just so richly blessed by being, even if you have never experienced. So thank y'all. And go home and go to sleep. That'll preach you all can go home now. <laughs> we have another video, but it's called, uh, Why Do You Serve With Jesus? It's a continuation of our serving with Jesus that we talked about last week, and we interviewed uh, some people that I think you would be blessed to watch. So, with uh, the forward as we play this video. Mean. Serving with Jesus means helping others and being kind just like he showed us. We can serve by doing good things for people who need help. For me, serving with Jesus means to be his instrument and uh, bring his teachings in my life, in my family's life, and ultimately to the society where I live in and uh, be full of service and duty for the Jesus. Thank you. To me, it means helping where you can and are able to, uh, whether it's doing work here in the church or in the outside uh, of the church itself, uh, just helping people and doing what you can do. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And the second is like unto it. In other words, it's the same thing. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On this hangs all the law and the prophets. Jesus had a way of uh, taking complicated things and making them uh, real simple and real understandable. We can't all become ministers, but all of us can join in the priesthood of believers anytime, anywhere. Right here, right now. Thank you for asking me to speak. God bless you. Amen. Serving with Jesus. I found myself focusing on that word with and realized that we have a wonderful opportunity this week to practice serving with Jesus. So I really want that to be um, my focus and hopefully everyone's focus as we work together during this week of the bazaar. Um, I know it's a lot of work, a lot of tired, uh, a lot of fun, but I wanna focus on the with so that that guards my thoughts, my, my actions, and especially my words. And then when the customers come, I wanna focus on the with so that we're able to share the presence of Jesus in our midst as we're serving. So whoever put the word with in the vision statement, thank you. I think it's going to help us focus. So as we serve, would the ushers come forward? gonna be okay you're you're gonna be okay oh the sun will keep on rising in that old familiar way and every little thing is gonna be okay you're gonna be all right darling you're you're gonna be all right cause the stars will keep on shining through the darkest night and you can know you're gonna be all right lift your eyes 
to the hills Remember where your help comes from Lift your eyes to the hills You'll never face a valley alone Cause even when your heart is breaking And you've gone and lost your way You're, you're gonna be okay gonna be okay I know that you're you're gonna be okay not a care in this whole world can take that truth away you're you're gonna be okay you're gonna be all right darling you're you're gonna be all right at the end of all our breath when we're beckoned on to the light love will meet you there we're gonna be all right and at the end of all our breath is the beginning of new life you're you're gonna be all right will you pray with me gracious and holy god we thank you that we know that we will be all right because of your love and for your just being with us. We thank you that you give us opportunities to serve and we thank you that you give us opportunities to give. But most of all, we thank you because of who you are. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Beautiful. Well, good morning, everyone. You all are looking pretty chipper, considering. This morning is considered a standalone service. Uh, we are in between. Let me put this up here. We are in between sermon series. We have just finished up uh, serving with Jesus, and so this service, this sermon is the choice of the preacher. So y'all watch out. <laughs> now I've chosen to uh, share with you one of my special scriptures. So this morning, let's talk about 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. And I'm reading from the NIV version. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, it's interesting to me that I learned this scripture many years ago from the King James. And the King James Version says, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Peculiar? Are you peculiar? I'm looking at some of you people. 
is this being you ever, like Joanna says, sometimes, <laughs> is being you ever see peculiar? All right, say praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to explore that today. First, we're going to talk about how our church is peculiar, but then also our gifts are peculiar. But what keeps us from using these gifts? Now, peculiar is defined as, usual, as unusual, odd, special, unique. And I think this church is peculiar, and I'll tell you why. We have people that do phone calls, cards, and visits to folks in nursing homes and the homebound who they're not even related to. They form friendships and connections. We have Together We Eat dinners on Thursday night for people we don't even know or don't normally socialize with. We've just spent the week processing items to sell, making baked goods, pricing and organizing for a sale that lasted one and a half days, and it benefits children and families we don't even know. We cut and deliver wood to people we call neighbors, but we don't do it for ourselves. I would say that is all peculiar. And that is what serving with Jesus is all about, being peculiar and unique to folks so that we show them the love of Christ and we bring them to Christ. So if our church body is peculiar, we must be made up of peculiar people. We are all unique. We have God-given gifts. So how do we discover those? Let me ask you, what are you passionate about? What lights your fire? What would you like to see happen in this world? That is why you are peculiar, because your passion is particular to you. And that passion is the result of spiritual gifts and talents that you were gifted with. So think a minute, what drives you? What would you like to see happen? There are several people in this church that would love to talk to you, me included. And if you're unsure, we have a spiritual gifts inventory that will help you do that. But if we are passionate about certain things, what keeps us from using these gifts, exploring these gifts? I believe there are three ways that we personally judge ourselves in a way that hinders us from doing what Christ calls us to do. We judge ourselves on our capabilities. We compare ourselves to others. And we lack comp confidence. Capabilities, comparison, and comp confidence. So let's talk about capabilities. God gives us a dream. He gives us a passion. He gives us a gift to do something. Then we evaluate ourselves on whether we are up to the challenge, up to the effort, up to the work. And a lot of times we find ourselves lacking. We try to suggest that this needs to be done by someone else, such as someone we view as a leader or can do it better than us. But if God gives you that dream, that passion, then God gave it to you to carry out. We've all heard the saying, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. That's for everyone. Everyone God calls, he will equip. So you don't have to worry about that. But let me use Moses and his call to illustrate my point. In Exodus 3, 
God calls Moses away from tending his sheep and on to God's holy mountain. There God tells Moses that God has heard the cries of his people and it is time to release them from bondage. And guess what, Moses? You're going to do this. Well, this is the conversation I view that it looked like this. God says, Moses, I have heard the cries of my people, and I have chosen you to lead them out of Egypt. And Moses responds with, I am nobody. How can I lead? God says, I am with you. Well, then Moses says, how will they know who you are? And how will they believe me? God says, tell them I am the great I am. Well, what if they won't believe me? God told him to throw down his staff, which turned into a snake, and just look at your arm, which was covered with scales. Over and over, God was speaking to Moses about what he was quite capable of doing if he leaned on God and not himself. Remember the shepherd boy of David? He was the smallest, he was the runt of the sons of Jesse. And if you look at 1 Samuel 16, you will see that David was, was quite low in a lot of pecking order. Even Samuel the prophet was surprised at it whom God had selected. This is how this was worded in the message. And this is 1 Samuel 16, 6 to 7. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab, who was the oldest, and thought, here he is, God's anointed. But God told Samuel, looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and his stature. I've already eliminated him. God judges pe persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face, God looks at the heart. You see, God saw in David more than his family or even himself, or even the prophet saw. God saw the potential for a mighty king, just as Moses had potential for a mighty leader. The second way we look at ourselves is comparison. We either compare ourselves to another person or how that person did something. We may look at a person and see, well, they're certainly more qualified than I am, so I'm not even going to try. Or maybe we look at that person and how they perform that task and figure we can't live up to it. So let's look at our old friend Moses again. In Exodus 4, Moses reminds God, like God didn't know, that he had a stutter. God again reminds him that he will give Moses the word. However, Moses figures God has not chosen the correct person and suggests there might be someone else. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched the Ten Commandments, but Charlton Heston did not do this. So, so don't look for it there. So God, growing impatient, said, let Aaron help you out, but you give him the words. We will see in later scriptures that Moses discovered his courage and that he is quite capable and speaks for God and even performs miracles. Comparison involves looking at how someone has done it before us. But the only person we are called to compare ourselves to is Jesus. Let me say that again. The only person we are called to compare ourselves to is Jesus. And our goal in life is to become more and more like him. Not like the person who has done it before and not like the person who will do it in the future. God gave you a special set of gifts that involves creatively using these gifts. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. 
as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I am a big fan of the author Bob Goff, and if you have not read any of his books, please get one of them. But the biggest one I like is called Dream Big. And in it he says, Comparison is the enemy of creativity. It is okay to learn from other people, and we should all do that. But we lose the unique way that God created us when we stop using our imaginations to copy someone else. It limits our ability to do the things we do best. And I like this. God didn't settle for a second best when he created you. You are not a carbon copy. So let Jesus fill your imaginations with your own unique gifts to bring to the world. Remember, you are not a carbon copy. Our friend Moses, after he got over comparison with Aaron, moved on to be the leader of the Israelites, creating small groups, electing leaders, doing things according to God's direction. The last area I want to look at is confidence. God views us differently than we view ourselves. We've already described that. In Philippians 4.13, the writer says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is what God wants us to get into our hearts and our minds. That our confidence is not from inside, but through Christ. God gives us confidence, and whether we Feel it or not, it doesn't matter. Dallas Willard says, The gospel is less about how to get into the kingdom of heaven after you die and more about how to live in the kingdom of heaven before you die. How we live through God's confidence is what we strive to do. For God's glory. That is one of the main reasons we serve God. So now we have looked at our capabilities, comparing ourselves, and our confidence level. But I want to add one more thing. We don't have to be the total package. We don't have to be everything. We are just a piece of the puzzle. Let me give you a modern example. Can I see the picture, please? Yes, it is. Who knows who that guy is? It's Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille is seven foot one and weighs 325 pounds. And yes, he sells copy machines and he sells Icy Hot and all these other things. But he played NBA basketball from 1995 to 2011 for the Orlando Magic, the LA Lakers, and the Miami Heat, to name a few. He played center. And when Shaq was on the court, in position, he was a force to be reckoned with. There was no knocking him down, as you see now. They just bounced off of him. He could dunk and usually broke the backboard, and he could do hook shots. But he had one problem. He could not make a foul shot to live in. In fact, I think he read, I read his foul shot record was like 29%. But he holds the record for the second highest amount of foul shots attempted in NBA history. Do you have the video up there, Sam? Kobe respecting, trusting his teammates. When Kobe came back from that injury late in the season, corresponding with this love fest that has broken out here at Staples. Oh, playing. You can, you can yep. hear that. You can hear that <laughs> at Venice Beach. Yep, they worked with him. 
the coaches practiced with him, but when it came game time, eh -eh, didn't work. But Shaq still was part of a team that won four championships, and he is honored as the top seven, one of the top 75 players in NBA history. Just because he couldn't make a foul shot didn't mean he couldn't contribute. And that is true for us. Just because we cannot do the entire package does not mean we cannot contribute. That's why we are part of a church family, that we all work together. We all have a part to play in God's kingdom. And frankly, I don't know about you, but I'm seeing the need to let's get on with it. So, one more time for our scripture. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. What are we supposed to do with these gifts? We're supposed to proclaim what, you, what the King James calls the excellencies of him. Through sharing our gifts, we share what God has done in our lives. God has done so many mighty things, and that's what makes us peculiar. We're not bragging on ourselves. We are bragging on God. So I ask you, what has God, God done for you? What are you passionate about? You have gifts. We all have gifts. They are unique to us. Can you imagine if we all were preachers? There would be nobody in the pews. Now, they'd want to be in the pews, but there'd be nobody in the pews. If we were all teachers, we all have to be learners, too. But you are peculiar. Say that to your neighbor. You are peculiar. And if they roll their eyes, say it again. Okay? Amen. A lot of you are saying, amen. Amen. And your gifts and talents are peculiar for this world, for this church, and for you. Vern sent me this quote this week from a book, and I will close with this. The book is called Evangelism in the Early Church by Dr. Michael Green. And it says that 80% or more of evangelism in the early church was done by ordinary Christians. Not pastors, not Christian celebrities, but it was mostly just by people explaining their unusual way of life or their particular way of life to their families and friends. By living in such a way, the people were drawn to them. May we live in such a peculiar way using our gifts and talents so people are drawn to the living Christ. May it be so. Will you pray with me? Gracious and whole God, we are just so thankful that you have made us unique, peculiar. And so we pray as we bring our hearts to you that we would serve as you have called us to do. May we be a blessing to others, and may we draw all men, all women, all children to you. Amen. Would you stand and sing our final song?
thankful for our peculiar band. <laughs> Did you notice the peculiar Krause family up there? Yes. Thankful that you all use your gifts. Thank you. So, as we leave today, let's be particularly peculiar this week. Show the world what we have and draw people to Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Thank you.
Jesus Christ.